Okay guys, uh, Ed Smith has another project going on. He's always doing something a little different, not the ordinary stuff. He enjoys figuring out special situations, let's call it. So I'm looking forward to bringing this uh, story to you. And I'm gonna jump in real quick, just remind you guys, I don't hardly ever mention this, but remember to share these videos, put the old like button and subscribe because it helps us a lot. We're trying to grow this channel a bit and uh, that helps us a lot and it doesn't cost you more than a few seconds to do that so just a little reminder but here we go i'm going to bring ed in and uh, we're going to talk about that right there and what he's doing you might find it interesting okay and you seem to always have something a little different going on we always just doing something even though trying to stay out of trouble yeah okay uh, and so try to do something that's correct or something like this and have some fun so yeah what we're doing this morning for a, a couple of reasons is that uh, we're going to put a Chevrolet distributor, happens to be a Mallory distributor, dual point distributor, and a flathead Ford. Really? And we're going to put it in there in a 49 to 53. Okay. That's the later ones and more people. There's more of those around and still things. And it sits in a, in, a, in a housing like this in front of the motor. Okay. So this is the distributor. So the distributor sits in the front of the motor like this. Okay, and the sewers out the side here where you can get at it. Uh huh. The early ones up to 49, the sewers down here, on the, down below here, and it's kind of hard to get at. So, okay. But this one here, what we did here, here's the original distributor out of here, a little small gear, a shaft. And yeah. It's got different things in it. It's got points, single set of points, and a vacuum advance, and old wiring and things that you can get all that stuff newer, get by these recondition i'm sure okay yeah but some of the guys want electronic yeah and, and and i don't know if you can get electronic conversion for this distributor okay probably can because some of those make a little bit of everything but yeah but with the mechanical advances in there it's hard to do to get them to swing out mechanically and get as much advance when we want it to be Oh, under load, not so much under load. I was going to ask you, why would you go to the trouble? So that's the reason. Yeah, for under load, it'd be more uh, spark advance and a little bit more advanced sometimes, and a little bit more fuel, like they're putting two carburetors on it. And this one here, we're going to put a four barrel carburetor on it. Okay. A new Edelbrock carburetor on it when we get done with it. And, and it's going to flow a little bit more. So you need a little bit more control of the spark. I see. So uh, what we did here, and it took a Mallory distributor. This happens to be a regular. The stock Mallory, the coil on the outside, okay. condenser and dual points, uh -huh. rotor. And yeah. You can buy all kinds of parts for this. Yeah. And it has a, the gear like this. And we're going to put it in a lathe and turn it down and shorten it. Okay. And, yeah, because uh, if we look at that and compare yeah. it to the factory yeah, original, yes, of course it's you can not, see it's a way different shaft Yeah, way situation. different size, yeah. Yeah, that's... And it's yeah. easy. If it's bigger, we can turn it down. Right, okay. Yeah, so it's in the shaft here, we can do all that stuff in the... In a so here's one here already turned. We just took the guts out. I put it back together the other day. So yeah, so we turned it down here a little bit. And okay, yeah, that put the Ford gear on it, and so uh -huh. that then it will slide right in here, be nice and tight. And then we're gonna put a clamp right here. Okay. And then put a little clamp on here. We can adjust a with a little bolt here to adjust the timing, whatever we want. I see. I just haven't did that yet. I think I'm gonna weld a little bracket on here. Ah, and put a, a 289 Ford hold down clamp on here. Yeah, very good. I have one of a simple little clamp and bolt that we buy. Yeah, and it would clamp right under there, and you can easily get at it. And right. when I get done, then uh -huh. you can adjust the points and stuff like this. And clamp it down. Okay. And while we're doing this, why we would choose a, a dual point distributor again? A lot of time you can get at this mechanism in here to set how much advances and stuff and control the springs how much it advances certain rpms okay so so the next next yeah. thing we're going to go tend to is the points on a dual point distributor one of them is about five or six degrees behind the other one so to spark one opens and one closes for every spark okay so that keeps the points cooler Oh, and they'll last longer. That's all a dual point distributor for, nothing else. Now, higher RPMs you go, yeah. 
the engine makes more compression. If you can get up to five or six thousand RPMs, compression may be 400. So then you want to retard the timing. On our new MS needle distributors, there's a chip, and we can adjust that chip for every thousand RPMs. It retards the timing two degrees or something. Okay. So at 6,000 RPMs, it could retard the timing eight degrees. We used to race cars, and we had two switches on the dash, and we hooked up our points separately. So we left the line, starting line, on maybe 13 degree advance. Okay. And halfway down the track, we took the switch, and it retarded it back to six degrees. Okay. And the, and the engine, the power would go maybe three miles an hour faster. Really? Just switching the timing over halfway yes. down? So now we can do that with this. Okay. And we are going to do that. We're going to hook up both these points here. When I put this back together again, drill another hole in here. Okay. So we'll have two wires, and each, each point would be separately. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, so. now that's a lot of effort for a flathead engine, yeah, right? Yeah, but we're happy. We're, but, but, it's going to help some. Okay, it's going to help. What we're doing is help. And some people ask, what can we do? Well, we're going to teach you that we can do that. Fairly reasonable. Instead of buying a six or $700 distributor. Right. Or something or something else. You just turned down a Chevrolet one. Even this one here, when we first, I changed the bushing and put it back in here. Okay. The bushing went in and plugged the oil hole. Oh. So I had to put oil in here. Because this was off the timing chain. And it throws oil everywhere, and it goes in, and it goes in that hole, hole, and oils the bushing. So all it takes is a splash from the chain. Splash from the chain to oil this. Oh, this interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then you have to be careful. Some late model bush covers, yeah, had a had a support back here. All right. So this thing would go in. It's a smaller distributor. Oh. So this distributor, that distributor don't fit them all. Oh, you got to be careful. Yes. This one happens, a smaller shaft distributor. Nice. So okay. all, all 49 to 53 distributors are not the same. Oh. Here's a cover. It goes in here. But the other distributor had a shank on the end and running this little, eh, and give it more support because this thing wouldn't shake around there. Oh, I see. Yeah, see. It'll keep it running more true in there. True in there, yeah. Yeah. And this is an aluminum cover, and that's a steel cover. Okay. Now, the other day, I had a steel cover with a stop on it. And okay. I had trouble with that a little bit, so I had to make a little shim up here, put more gaskets under here. I see. Just yeah. raise the shim up on it so it didn't rub on there. A little bit of a secret there. You have to be careful. Yeah. But this distributor will not fit that aluminum cover. No, it won't. And it does... It does, it does fit in this, this one here. Look at that. That's fine, yeah. Now, and it all lines up good. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you see, see it's going to oil through that hole. It's going to oil through this hole in the distributor. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so that make a nice distributor and, and put the dual wires on it. And we can buy points, condenser cap, and everything on it. Make a, a really a nice little unit here. Fairly cheap. All right. You usually buy these Mallory distributors for around $75. You yeah. Know. You can also get a, a new, a newer distributor from electronic. Okay. I have one over here. It just looks just like this one. It's electronic ignition. Uh huh. If you want that instead of points. Right. So that's all available. Yeah. Depending on how you want to build it. Yeah. Together. How you want to build the distributor for your particular engine with your application. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some people like the points, and if the points are set right, it works great, doesn't it? It's fine. And then the points, even with the points, if you set the points different gap, it's going to change the timing. So every time you set the points a different gap, let's say 28 or 32, it has to rotate a little bit more to open that same point. Yes. Because of the gap. So you'll change the timing one or two degrees by, by just the points different gap. Right. So... This way here, we can set each point a different gap. And they said, like the old days, they said, well, just the car, if it don't run, just get your screwdriver out and set the points and, and a little sandpaper there and sand them up a little bit and then run fine, get going, get home. And sometimes with electronic ignition, you don't know what's wrong with it. Right. Maybe this, it may be a wire or something else and nobody, but 
points thing, you can shoot it to a little test light. You can find out what's wrong or why the car don't run. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, interesting. So the old people used to say, well, just what do you got a gauge to set the points or something? Well, you might use a thin dime. If you don't have a thin dime, we'll use two nickels. But that probably is not a good idea <laughs> either. But I think anyways, so. <laughs> you can choose that what's correct and for your own application, I think. So. Right. Well, yeah. part of the fun here is you're experimenting. You're seeing how things fit up. Yeah, see what we can do. And yeah. you're making sure your parts fit before you assemble everything. Yeah, right. Yeah, before you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. That's good. So you, uh, what is this engine going to go into? This motor here is going to go into a Model A. Oh, a Model A. Model A. Okay. Our friends over here have a Model A. They're, uh, they've been my friends for 40 years or so on. They have a motorcycle shop down the street here. Uh -huh. And I think their dad bought the Model A for something like $75 up in uh, Prescott someplace when they were in high school. Oh, wow. Okay. And they drove it to high school and they still have it and it runs fine. They had it running the other day, got it out and run it and they decided to put a V8 in it. Okay. So I'm going to build them a V8 and I'll put it to make the Model A run a little better on the streets today. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So. What's the store in that block? It looks pretty rough, but this is not a reason. Not for too it. bad. I just haven't torn it apart. Okay. But this block was shipped to me. It's out of a 53 Ford half ton truck. Okay. It was complete motor. Complete. Complete. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot of the parts cleaned uh -huh. already. Okay. So this way I just don't want to tear it apart until I get done with what I'm doing here a little bit to clean up my jobs is so i don't get two or three scattered around right but uh this one was shipped to me from kentucky huh and the guy wants me to rebuild it and uh when we get done we're going to put a four barrel on this one again with some reds headers and uh -huh. we're going to put a five speed tremec transmission behind it okay and he's going to put it in a ford truck a half ton ford truck that's yeah. not terribly different from that uh, mercury almost the same that you did one we did the other day with the mercury yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Same thing. Interesting. He liked that one, and so he sent me, called me, and said he sent me this one. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. So I have a half the parts cleaned. I think the, the cylinder heads are all done. Uh -huh. We sent them away because we can burn them and clean them and, and get some of that done. And they, I think they've machined them, milled them up, and I got the pan done and some of a bunch of other stuff painted already. Oh, okay. So you're way more ahead than it looks already. Yeah, a little ahead of more than it looks, yeah. Cool. And the parts that we didn't need, water pumps and stuff, we already threw them away. Yeah, okay. So, it's all uh, gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, so. thank you. This is a lot of fun seeing all these little projects you're doing, yeah, Ed. projects are fun. And, yeah. Keep them. And what a nice day. The oh, last yeah. few days, it's been nice and shiny. And maybe 80, 81, mm. 2 degrees. And good day to get some work done. Awesome. Well, enjoy yeah. your day, Ed. Yeah, good. Thanks. All right, guys. There's another Barry T's Garage video for you. Thanks for coming along. Appreciate you watching. And... Looking forward to having you come along and join us for the next one. Thanks so much.